Welcome back to Footballology. So here's my week four pick'em video. I want to recap my week three, which I did atrocious in seven and nine. Uh, a couple of those games is just crazy. I mean, Buffalo beat Minnesota. I can't imagine anyone picking against Minnesota in that game. I went with an upset pick, Arizona over the Bears, which should have been a W. And then they decided to throw Josh Rosen in there at the end, saying, oh, save us, save us, save us. Way too late to the end. Um, and that was really about it. Cleveland getting their first win, though. I definitely seen that coming. Uh, good thing Baker came in the game at halftime. I don't think that would have happened if Baker doesn't come in. What else did we have happen last week? Uh, the Green Bay-Washington game. I actually had Green Bay winning that, and I really thought Green Bay would have pulled it out, but I think Washington came out with a whole different moxie uh, than the week prior because of the, all the, you know, they only kicked field goals over the up nine points, I think. And so I just think they came out with a whole different moxie and just wanted to really show teams and show people that they can be an elite offense or at least just put up points with Adrian Peterson being their star running back. And then the Rams, that was easy. That was open and shut case. And the New Orleans Atlanta game, what a shootout. That was crazy. I didn't see that coming. Um, but, I mean, Drew Brees did what Drew Brees do, does best in shootouts. I mean, you think about it in the Wild Wild West, if you wanted somebody on your side, Drew Brees is that dude. But, like I said, in this uh, week three, I went seven and nine. It was all right. I know I could do a lot better. I'm trying to get double-digit wins. So, without further ado, we're going to get on to week four. Week four, we got this Thursday night game that, I mean, before the Buffalo game, I was extremely looking forward to Minnesota versus the Rams. That is a potential NFC championship game right there, hands down. Uh, one of the, uh, probably two of the best teams in the NFL right now that as far as just talent goes, as far as like just everything goes on that roster, both teams have quality quarterbacks. I think Minnesota is definitely run, lacking in a run game. I I, I like Dalvin Cook, but I just don't know if he's the guy. Like, it's kind of question mark right now. He was definitely supposed to help that Minnesota offense go to the next level as far as them being able to run the ball. But I know Minnesota's banged up on the offensive line. So that's, you know, kind of something of an issue. I mean, you look for Keyless Hill for all the good teams, and that's their probably their Keyless Hill. Their defense was still good, but, I mean, apparently Josh Allen just carved him up. Really didn't carve him up. He just kept running the ball and ran for his life and just happened to get first downs and touchdowns. Uh, but this Thursday night game, tomorrow, I think is going to be a really quality game. I think it's going to be solid. I think these are two good teams, regardless of what their records are, regardless of what happened last week. These are two teams I think are going to come out and play really hard. I'm upset with Minnesota because I feel like they're that team now that plays down to their competition because of the Buffalo game. I think that they were overlooking Buffalo, and they were looking to this Rams game Thursday night and was like, oh, we can go out there, put up 17 points on Buffalo and be good to win. And Buffalo just wasn't having it. They, they came to laughing stock of the whole entire NFL for a week, and they were trying to make themselves look a lot better. And they did. I mean, don't get me wrong. They tried to make themselves look like a contender. And they might be one of those teams that you just don't want to see down the stretch when you're trying to fight for a playoff spot. They might just be that team to knock you out. So watch out for Buffalo in the long run, I guess. But as of right now, Thursday night, I got the Rams. Yeah, sorry. I have the Rams beat Minnesota. I just think that at the end of the day, the Rams are probably going to have way too much offense for their defense. That defense has shown to have some lapses at times, the Minnesota defense. But realistically, that Rams offense is a weld oil machine. Moving on to Sundays, we got Cincinnati over Atlanta. I think Cincinnati has shown that they can be a quality contender and a quality player in the AFC game, in the AFC conference. Uh, Atlanta, they just, mm, if one week it's not the offense, it's the defense. If it's not the defense, it's the offense. And they just can't find that balance. They're one of those teams that should look like the Rams, should look like the Vikings, where they're playing quality on both ends of the ball. But I think that the two big injuries that the Atlanta Falcons have, which actually, I think they just lost Ricardo Allen, too. Or Rich, uh, yeah, Ricardo Allen. They just lost him. So that's three injuries to their starters as far as defense goes. And so they're really banged up on defense, and that's starting to show its uh, colors there, and it's just really starting to show up. And I think Cincinnati and Andy Dalton are going to take a big advantage of that secondary and some of the holes that they have there at the next level. So I look forward to Tyler Boyd having another big game, maybe even Tyler Eifert having a big game. They had Joe Mixon. I definitely feel like Joe Mixon would have went off this game. So, but I'm taking Cincinnati over Atlanta. 
Uh, we got Chicago over Tampa Bay. I just think that Chicago defense is proving that, you know, just don't give up. <laughs> don't lose us the game offensively. Basically, that Chicago defense is proving to this point where we will win the game. Just don't lose it. Don't throw a pick six or two pick sixes and put us behind the eight ball. Just keep it close enough. And at the end of the day, that Chicago defense is just going to win it for you. And it's just, it's mind blowing. I think they might shut down the Fitz magic train. Uh, even though it got kind of stonewalled a little bit on Monday night. But I definitely feel like the Fitz magic train is probably about to get really slowed against this Bears defense. This Bears defense is just something that it's next level almost. I mean, their secondary is not that quality like a Minnesota or even like uh, the Rams, but I mean, Rams are banged up back there, but they're not as quality, but the front seven that the Chicago Bears have, oh my God, they can get the heat and they will bring the heat and it's just, oh, it's crazy. But I think they're going to definitely take Tampa. Uh, I got Dallas over Detroit. I think Detroit's defense, once again, they're week to week, one week they're good, one week they're not. And I think Dallas defense is still starting, they're still finding their stride, but getting good, like getting better week by week. And I think they're going to try to put some heat on Matthew Stafford, really put some pressure on him to make plays. And also for Kerryon Johnson to do it, what he did last week, as far as rushing for 100 yards, they're going to try to put more pressure on them to run the ball and just to see if they can really beat him. But at the end of the day, I think that when you look at it, I think Dallas and Zeke Elliott, I think they're going to take it to the next level and really get this run game going like it was back in Zeke's rookie year. <sighs> Buffalo, I'm picking against Buffalo again. If Buffalo comes out and beat Green Bay, I will be so shocked and so surprised. Yeah, everybody's going, oh, Aaron Rodgers hobbled and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, Buffalo just, they're proving that they're, they can be a threat in the AFC, I guess. But I got Green Bay against Buffalo as of right now. I think that Green Bay defense is, uh, they're trying. They really are. I mean, obviously the Clay Matthew issue. But that Green Bay defense, it's like, eh, it's like it wants to be good, but it's just not good. And then Aaron Rodgers doing Aaron Rodgers thing. I think that Aaron Rodgers might have enough to take uh, Buffalo down by himself as far as offense goes and that defense, that Buffalo defense, which we've shown. It's like even last year, that Buffalo defense was still something to, you know, be messed with. So I think that it's shown that they can kind of make that next step and things like that. But I think at the end of the day, Green Bay is going to go over Buffalo. Green Bay is going to win over Buffalo. Uh, we got Philadelphia over Tennessee. Uh, they're, they're back and forth. That Tennessee game in Jags last week, I'm not shocked about it because I know Tennessee has a pretty decent defense with Dick LeBeau and Mike Vrabel in house. Uh, but I think that Tennessee could still be a true contender just from a defensive side. And it's crazy because they still got a lot of offensive weapons to the point where they should be putting up a lot more points than nine. Uh, but I think Philadelphia and Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz week two, I think that he's definitely going to show that he can make that progression from week one, which he didn't have a bad week one uh, or first week. But I think that this week two is going to be even better than this week one and just going to progressively get better throughout the season. So Philadelphia over Tennessee, I got Houston over Indianapolis. That's just going to be a good game because Indianapolis defense is somewhat relevant and Houston is still trying to find themselves offensively. I think Deshaun Watson is still trying to find his legs offensively. And once he finds his legs, once he gets comfortable with that ACL, I think it's just he's still playing the mental game with his leg. And once he starts to get there, I think you're going to see the Houston offense take off. But I think as of right now, I think Houston has enough defensively to slow down Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts. And they're going to probably pull out a dub this week. Uh, I'm going with the upset, I guess. Upset. Uh, Miami. Miami's 3-0. I don't know if the upset would be the other way around. But I'm still going with Miami over New England. I think Miami is still – they just found their groove. You know, I think that's what it really comes down to. And New England is just New England right now. They're early, early season New England. I'm not, I'm not worried about them. They're one of those teams that you want to say, oh, they're down. They're done. They're done. And as soon as we say they're done, Tom Brady's winning the AFC Championship game going to the Super Bowl. So as of right now, though, Miami's going to beat New England this Sunday. Uh, Jacksonville over the Jets. Sam Darnold, truest test is this Sunday against the Jaguars. It's going to be so ugly. Um, he's thrown a lot of interceptions. I mean, the Browns defense is good. The Detroit defense was decent. Uh, who has he played? Miami defense, they're they're decent. But this Jags defense, this is the team. This is the team that I'm waiting on the Chiefs to play. As far as like Patrick Mahomes, really like buying into Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback. But Jacksonville is going to be the true test for Sam Darnold, and I just don't know if he's ready. I really don't know if he's ready. Oh, it's going to be scary. But I'm taking Jacksonville in that game, especially them coming off that loss like that, nine to six. Oh my god. Uh, we got Cleveland over Oakland. 
think that I think that's a thing now. I think you can actually go into games thinking that Cleveland's going to win. With Baker Mayfield, quarterback is going to be even more crazy. I think he's going to carve up that Oakland secondary, that Oakland defense in general. He might be looking at a four-tug day, and it, it's going to be interesting. And then you turn into the other side of the ball, and this Cleveland defense is no slouch either to the point where Derek Carr might have his hands full. So Cleveland definitely with Oakland. I don't want to see it as an upset pick. I think it's actually a true good pick. Uh, uh, Cleveland winning this ball game. And then we got Seattle over Arizona. Josh Rosen is not going to look good this week, but I think the following week he gets another week of practice under his belt and everything. I think he's going to progressively show signs of greatness. Not greatness. Let me take that back. Uh, of just improvement, I guess you could say. But I definitely like Josh Rosen as a starting quarterback. Uh, I thought personally coming out of this draft, I thought he would probably be the best quarterback out of all of them. As of right now, uh, Sam Darnold is okay. Uh you look at Baker Mayfield, what he did in that second half of that Cleveland game, you can say Baker Mayfield looks like the guy. So the jury's still out, obviously, on all of them, but I feel like Josh Rosen was the guy to have as far as quarterbacks go in the first round. And then we got the Giants over New Orleans. I think the Giants are going to pull this one out. The New Orleans defense, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm sad because I was so hyped about New Orleans defense last year, and they proved me to be right as far as them being elite and being quality. And then they come out this year in their first three games, and you're just like, oh, my God, what is this? Are we are we back to, you know, shootouts? And hopefully Drew Brees can just throw that 90-yard bomb at the end of the game and win it for us kind of type deal. Not 90, maybe like 34-yard dot down the middle of the field. But, uh, <laughs> but I think that the New Orleans defense has a lot to prove, but I just don't know if they're going to be able to do it this week. They had the Giants and Saquon and OBJ, and it's just going to be – it's, I think it's going to be a field day. I think it might. we might be looking at another shootout. And, uh, where that? Oh, and then MetLife, too? The Giants is about to turn it on. I think it's going to be a shootout again. Drew Brees, is, I hope he got his shoulder warmed up. And then we got uh, the Chargers over to the San Francisco 49ers. Unfortunately, the Niners lost their franchise guy. So now this game really kind of tilts into the Chargers' favor. I think, honestly, if, if Jimmy Garoppolo was playing this game, I would have gave the Niners the nod as far as the upset goes because I felt like the Chargers is a better team. But with, without Jimmy Garoppolo, I think the Niners are just not as quality as they should be. Uh, I personally feel like they needed more offensive line help. They need they need weapons help, like, badly. Like, Matt Maria is cool. Alfred Morris is cool. Those guys are decent. I think just the run scheme that they're in, they're decent. But Pierre Gerson and Marquise Goodwin, they're just not getting it done, bro. George Kittle is your best receiver as far as my opinion goes. And they need it. And that's why I came out with the Julio trade video. Uh, they need a guy like that. They need a number one receiver, in my opinion. They're hurting so bad without a hurt, number one. And now that their quarterback's down, it's going to be even worse for them as far as this season going forward. So definitely think that the Chargers are going to pull that one out over the Niners. And then we got Baltimore and Pittsburgh. That's just going to be a good, ugly game. What is that? I think that's Sunday. Oh, that's Sunday night, too. Oh, that's going to be a mm, that's going to be an ugly game. Uh, but I got Boston were winning that one. I think Pittsburgh thought they found a groove against the Tampa Bay team. Uh, I think that defense just kind of had a chip on their shoulder for the game. If they can carry it over to this week, they might have a chance to win against Joe Flacco and the Ravens. But realistically, I think Joe Flacco and his new weapon, his new trio of weapons, if you will, I think they've shown that they could put up points and actually hang with some teams. And it might just be enough. Uh, if Baltimore defense can come out and play like a Baltimore defense, like I said, it's Pittsburgh and Baltimore. You, these games are usually like 14-17. 10, 17, somewhere around there. Like a really play play close to the best kind of type games. So I really got Baltimore pulling this out. I think they just have just enough to kind of get them over the hump. And it might be one of those games where you say, if they had Le'Veon Bell, what would it look like? Just saying. And then Monday night, which I'm so excited about. For one, Chiefs playing primetime is always exciting. I mean, it's your favorite team and they're playing primetime. But I think it gives a chance even though he already has national attention right now, but it definitely gives Patrick Mahomes even more national attention to the point where, hey, you're on a big stage. Can you do it with the lights are bright on a Monday night? And you know the world is going to be watching. Oh, my God, you know the world is going to be watching. I think everyone's kind of biting it and waiting for that first interception to come. And I'm not going to say I'm one of them, but I'm kind of like, I'm hoping it doesn't happen because we just don't have a defense. But... Uh, <laughs> I just think that everyone's kind of waiting for it. And I just, oh, ESPN is probably going to get a lot, a lot of views this Monday night just because of Patrick Mahomes alone. But I think the Chiefs are still going to pull it out. No bias to can. I think that we have enough to the point where maybe defensively we might make a play or two. Our defense is looking like butt right now. 
but our defense might make a play or two in this game to give us a chance to be in a to give us that advantage, a chance to win this ball game. I think Denver goes as as Vaughn goes. So I think we're gonna have to scheme something as far as running Ed Von Miller, running Tyreek Hill, Ed Von Miller. I think that we did that last year when we went to uh mile high. We kept running Ed Von Miller or you know, running options at him, making him choose, taking him off this uh as far as like pinning him on his heels and not giving the uh, ability to pin his ears back. And I think if we can do that, we'll be fine. Uh definitely Mitchell Schwartz though. He has his hands full in this game. They might switch him to Eric Fisher just to kind of give him a better advantage, but if we can contain Von Miller and Patrick Mahomes continue doing what he's doing, it may be, I think, it may be a game where we might have to lean a little bit more on Kareem Hunt to give us a, uh, give us a, a chance to win, and that might be it. But like I said, we need a player or two from our defense to really take this to the next level. When you look at as far as like – I'm sorry, I'm rambling right now. But when you look as far as like the, the Denver Broncos and you look at their, sec, or their receiving core, they have a really quality receiving core. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is turning it up this year. Like, he's he's always good. Like, in my opinion, like Fitzpatrick, he's always good for a game or two, or maybe three. And you're like, oh, nice. But this year, for some reason, it seemed like Emmanuel Sanders is playing like a whole other beast. And then Cortland Sutton, the rookie receiver that they have, I'm really excited about. Personally, I think that once they make the transition to Chad Kelly, because I think Chad Kelly is going to be the starter eventually, I think this Denver Broncos team is going to take it to the next level for sure. That's all I have for you guys this week in the Pickles video. I really hope you guys like this video. If you're not a footballologist yet, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel today. Become a footballologist and stay safe, football fans. See you next time.